thousands of people do this every day, sit in the interview hot seat. Have you made a mistake or made mistakes that cost time money? A few land the job. Many blow their chances. You know, I actually genuinely felt sorry for him. Business psychologist Dr. Rob Young has interviewed thousands of people. He thinks he can turn an interview duffer into an A-class candidate. This has obviously made a terrible impact. I'm surprised they're not just bundling him out of the door. Today, there are four real candidates for one real job. Listening in, I think there's something wrong with you. Which one will fail so spectacularly that their one hope is Rob's unique brand of no-holds-barred training? Come on. You don't want people to feel sorry for you. Throw your body into it. Use your hands, use your face. He might get better, but I'm not holding my breath, otherwise I will turn blue and die. No previous experience is required for this job at a West London estate agent. We're looking for a lettings negotiator. They have to be articulate. They need to be very energetic. Not too pushy. The most important thing is dedication. Not only will they earn themselves a salary of around £35,000 a year. Oh, they'll get a Mercedes, uh, A-class. But when they get really good, like uh, Liz and Nicola, they'll get Jeeps. These four candidates think they're perfect for the job. But can they convince anyone else? It's interview day. While they'll be looking for the best candidate, Rob will be looking for the worst. And once he's found them, he claims he can transform them from no hoper to job winner. Rob's equipped with a monitor and earpiece so that he can see and hear everything that happens. It's time for candidate number one. <laughs> right, fire away. OK, whenever I see someone get a notepad out in an interview, I think, what are you doing? It's about having a verbal exchange. It's about keeping eye line. It's, it's not about taking notes. I, I also deliver enthusiasm. I've never run short of that, really. You know, okay. uh, you know even flying off to, to Milan on an hour's notice. Uh, yeah. Dropping in little anecdotes like that, you know, flying off to Milan at an hour's notice, you think, you know, you've had a really big, high-powered job. So why do you want to work for a single office estate agents in West London? It creates questions in the interviewer's minds. Then there is an unexpected delay. Candidate two hasn't shown up yet. The candidate is already on the back foot and he hasn't even said a single word. He's 10 minutes late and it's just an unforgivable sin, really. Hi. Nice to meet you. And this is Jan. Hello. Hello. Nice to How meet you. Office. Great. Call it. I'm usually very punctual, actually. Yeah, yeah, OK. Despite being late, he's actually making quite a good appearance just by how he's dressed. Uh, he's wearing a dark suit and dark shoes and paired it with a white shirt, uh, which is a very classic, safe combination for men. You seem quite a, like, placid kind of person. What, what really, without... I don't know how to word this without saying, what makes you excited? <laughs> what, what makes me excited? Can't think of a better way uh, to that. need to keep it clean here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a very Not personal fair. question. I think this is actually an example of the fact that he's a fairly good-looking chap, well turned out, and his image within the first couple of minutes of the interview has actually wowed the interviewers. They haven't really listened to what he's been saying. Um, they just quite fancy him, actually. Time for candidate number three. How would your best friend describe you? If your best friend said Zilla in three words, how, how would he or she describe you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, probably lively. OK. A little bit naughty. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, always smiling. Zilla has actually excellent body language. She's using not only uh, the tone of her voice, but she's smiling, she's using her hands. Um, she's probably the most positive candidate we've seen today. And the final applicant is Gary Snow. Have you made a mistake or made mistakes that cost time or money? Uh, time? Yes, I, well, in, in, in my present business. Any, any time? Well, my present degree. business, I would say that um, I've used people that are very unreliable um, and I've come unstuck. Gary's looking really hot under the collar now. The sweat is practically trickling down his face. It's perfectly acceptable to take your jacket off, but sitting there and sweating bucket loads like that, it's just not a very pleasing image to leave your interviewers with. Then I kind of um, started working for my father-in-law, but it wasn't my father-in-law at the time. I think he is feeling a little bit out of the depth, unfortunately. He's worked for most of his life in a family business, 
and now he's being interviewed by three fairly attractive younger women and it's probably a situation that is completely new to him. Have you been in conflict sort of, throughout your career with anyone in authority? Yeah, I had a stage in my life when um, my marriage ended um, where um, I, I kind of, when they knew the marriage was ended, they kind of blanked me. They didn't want to know me anymore. They didn't involve me in meetings. This is more of a counselling session than an interview. In an interview, it's about selling yourself, about highlighting your strengths, really being positive about yourself, and trying to basically pull the wool over the interviewer's eyes in terms of your weaknesses. The interviews are over. So which of the four candidates will get the job? Charlie certainly had charm, but in the end, it's Zilla's social skills that really impress them and guarantee her the position. She is Anderson Reese. I'm sorry, she is Anderson Reese incarnate. But there was one other candidate who stood out from the rest for all the wrong reasons. I don't think he was swimming in sweat. It was dripping not... down his face, and he wanted to wipe it, and he just wouldn't. And I just felt of him. This year, I heard. I just felt so sorry. He's for him. not, as far as we're concerned. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he's not. At the, he's, he can't be a contender for us. I think it went quite well. Um, it was quite daunting uh, having three people um, trying to interview at the same time. He brought his personal tragedy in on the interview, yeah. and it yeah, made me really right. uncomfortable. And I was in there for for an hour, so. An hour in an interview, I think, quite, means quite a lot. So I think it went quite well. He deserves a chance, but we can't necessarily we can't be the afford. ones to give it to yeah, him. We, because we're not a charity. We can't afford because to give Because we, we to have him. too much urgency at stake here. Rob thinks he can turn Gary into a job winner in just three days, but only if Gary is prepared to change and face up to some hard truths. What I'm worried about is that in the interview, you did come across as a bit nervous. Um, I mean, just going back to the feedback, but just two of the things that they told me. Yeah. One, one of them was that, you know, <laughs> you were quite nervous. They thought you were nervous. The other thing, though, was because you kind of spewed all this stuff about your, your broken down relationship and how your career broke down, they just felt a bit sorry for you. Okay. That's not the kind of impression you want to leave people with. You can't be too honest. You're just kind of throwing it all out onto the table. Uh, so you're not presenting you, the product, in the most positive light. Do you want to, I want to change the things that I do. After a difficult few years, Gary Snow needs a new job and a fresh start. But he has no experience of interviews because most of his working life has been spent on his father-in-law's business. My life revolved around it. I, I kind of was working through the night, weekends, worked 24-7 to help build the business up. But then Gary got divorced, and it wasn't just his marriage that ended. His career in the family business went down the pan too. Now the pressure is really on. If he can only get a job, he can start a new life with his new girlfriend. I think it's critical that he gets a job so we can live together and move on in the next chapter of his life. He's all right when he's like with people he knows, but if you put him in an environment, with people he doesn't know, you can see the nervousness comes out and he needs more confidence. I think it's the time of his life now, with uh, everything that's gone on in the last few years with his divorce. Um, he's tried certain things and unfortunately it hasn't, it hasn't come off for him. And he's tried so hard. He, he really is a grafter. Let's think about him, he's a grafter. But that will count for nothing unless Gary can convince an interviewer to hire him. Over the next three days, Rob's going to work on Gary's presentation skills and his self-confidence. Yeah, I'm thinking of taking my microphone off and walking out because I just do not feel comfortable in one little bit. He wants to transform him from clammy candidate to cool contender. How nervous on a scale of one to, oh my God, oh my God. But will Gary stick the course? You haven't seen an interview from hell yet, if you think this is difficult. Or will he stick one on Rob? <laughs> it's day one. Rob believes that an interview is like a sales pitch. So the first thing that Gary has to learn is how to sell, sell, sell. Good morning, how are you morning. feeling? I'm fine, thank you, are you okay. all right? Well, you're probably wondering why I brought you to a chemist, so should we step inside? Okay. What we're going to do here today is 
work on your selling skills. And so I'm going to put you behind the perfume counter here at this chemist. <laughs> being calm and relaxed, not being too pushy. You know, what I want you to do is find out, you know, it doesn't have to be straight away, but just as the conversation progresses, what their name is, what their birthday is, and also what their fragrance is. But it's all about, you know, finding out what buttons to push. And that's exactly what you do in an interview. You're trying to find out what buttons to push so that they buy you, they offer you the job to work in their business. Can I try um, Led Tom? OK. Is it not on the front? No. OK. Sorry, what was it? Led Tom. Led Tom. Excuse me, it's my first day today. <laughs> it's fine. Can you see it anywhere? No, I can't. Come on. Which one was it, sorry? Let's talk. Do, 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 do. Sorry. It's just right in front of you, the yellow bottle. OK. Yeah. Sorry. <sighs> well, it's still early days yet. Um, I have to say it's crap. He's not engaging them, he's not talking to them. Bear with me, it's my first day today. Well, give him a big smile, Gary. Well, unfortunately, you're, you're asking the wrong person. It's my first day, you see, and I'm right. kind of trying to get the hang of where all the perfumes are. Um, he's just pacing up and down. He's not yeah. making eye contact with them. He should be paying yeah. attention to them. He should be watching them, um, checking that yeah. they're okay, whereas he's just pacing up and down, turning his back on them. So, not terribly impressed. Mm. Oh, sorry, what did you ask for? I think that his performance has reached a ceiling. This is about as good as it's going to get. If that would be here. He might get better, but I'm not holding my breath, otherwise I will turn blue and die. How do you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. Right, OK. Extremely uncomfortable, to the degree where I'm thinking of taking my microphone off and walking out because I just do not feel comfortable one little bit. But, I mean, this is really good practice for uh, you. Yeah, but it's like, it's nothing what I know about completely, and it's like... Just yeah, but you see, in an interview situation, there will be times when someone asks you something yeah. that you have never come across. Yeah, but I wouldn't go for a job working in a uh, perfume counter. No, 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 but you've, you're going for a job as mm. an estate agent and you've never done it before, have yeah. you? Have, have you ever sold a, a property before? No, no. No, exactly. You know nothing about it, do you? Have you ever shadowed someone who, who's in property? No. No. So, you know, you're going yeah, for that job. Yeah, but I haven't job. had that experience either, do you know what I mean? Usually you'd come here, you'd get product training in and... and yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, when nice. you go for an interview, you know, yeah. you haven't had that training yet, and you've got to appear confident in that situation, OK? You can do this, I know you can. It's just a question of, you know, really working at it. And I know you feel uncomfortable, but, you know, sort of, you haven't seen an interview from hell yet, if you think this is difficult. OK, is there uh, any, on the, any testers there that...? See, he's engaged them, he's making eye contact, um, he's asked them at least two questions so far. Yeah, would you like to try some? Yep, third question, that's better. See, he doesn't need to know anything about the stupid product, but, you know, sort of, he's engaging them, just keeping them there through force of sheer will, which is exactly what you need to do in an interview. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, he didn't engage that customer at all. I think his performance is actually, it's peaked and it's now getting worse. How do you feel? <laughs> right. Right, OK, well, why don't we quit? With Gary's performance taking a nosedive, Rob decides to call the task to a halt. OK. OK, come on, let's get out of here. Right, OK, thanks a lot. It's not a promising start, but Rob is determined to persevere on to the next lesson. If Gary is ever going to stop interviewers feeling sorry for him and actually land a job, he has to learn the golden rule of every star candidate. Accentuate the positive. It's not about lying. It's that thing that politicians do. They don't lie, but they try and put things in the best possible light. It's time to find out if Gary can keep quiet about his past difficulties and find something to be proud of. There's that over-candidness, which I'm just worried about, because you don't want people to feel sorry for you. What are your strengths? My organisation skills. And what would you say is your biggest weakness? Um, I don't know. 
whenever anyone asks you about a weakness, don't say, I can't think of anyone, because no one is perfect. Yeah. Presentations to large groups of people. That's your answer, there you go. Well, it's a start. But can he stay positive? Gary's uncomfortable with people he doesn't know, and that's exactly what he'll be facing in an interview. So what I want to do now is just grab some strangers off the streets and try and see how you cope with them asking you some interview questions. Sure. I'd like to ask you, what interested you particularly about this post? Um, well, um, as far what, as for the, the property job, yes? yes. Yeah, the, yeah okay. as far as the property job, yeah. I, I'm, well, I know it involves dealing with people. My weaknesses are um, it's dealing with maybe the uh, uh, on computers, but I'm sure I can kind of um, pick whatever kind of um, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, okay, well, we'll okay. just take a break. Okay, thank you. Okay. If Gary's going to make any progress, he's got to untie his tongue and practice. What are your strengths? Uh, my main strengths are um, actually kind of my organisation skills um, and also kind of being a people's person as far as um, dealing with people and also um, I'm a team player as well, which I think is very important. And money-wise? Uh, money is not that important at this stage. All I'm interested in is learning aspects about the industry and then long term I can look at the money situation. Okay, okay we'll Cheers. stop it there. Yeah. Thank you ever Thanks. so much. No problem. That's brilliant, thank you. See, that was really good. You're using your hands, mm. you, know, you deflect to that question, you know. So he talked about you know filthy, disgusting money. And you yeah. said, yeah, money's not that important to me. You know, I'm not a sort of money hungry little piglet. And what are your greatest strengths then? What do you bring to this? this uh, I would uh, say my main strengths are um, actually kind of uh, being a team player. Uh, my organisation skills um, and also kind of um, working with uh, people on a one-to-one -one basis. So I would say they're my main strengths. I have to say, okay. you answer the questions, you used your hands, you were smiling, okay? Top banana. After a disastrous start, Gary's gaining confidence, but will he be able to maintain the momentum? Tomorrow's, tomorrow's the day that I get concerned about. I'm having a little bit of a panic attack. They won't tell me what I've got to do, therefore it's got to be, I'm sure they've got something pretty evil up their sleeve. It's day two. Yesterday, Gary almost quit, and Rob's still got a long way to go to turn him into a competent candidate. At the moment, whatever he says, Rob thinks Gary's monotonous voice will send the interviewers straight to sleep. Okay, so here we are. We're outside Radio One and we're going to work on your voice because one of the things I don't think you do enough is project your enthusiasm, which you have bucket loads of. Okay. So we're going to be working with a newsreader. Um, so let's go in. And Radio One newsreader John Stewart is on hand to try and drag Gary's dreary voice out of the file marked dull. I think probably the first thing to do is just crack on and get you to read an example bulletin. I've got some that I've pulled out from the last few months here. We'll record that and have a listen back to it and just sort of take it from there and see okay. how you feel. A ten-year-old boy critically ill after hitting by after being hit by a double a bus in North London, his father was killed. Kelly Holmes has scooped a gold, gold medal in their 800 metres at the Olympics. She's Britain's first female Olympic champion on the track since Sally Gunnell 12 years ago. Great. Let's stop that there. We're not worried about the content. What we're trying to get is, you know, sort of just the, the tone of voice, mm. right? Because, you know, if you read them, obviously, Kelly Homer's, you know, scooping a gold medal. You know, that's fantastic news. So, you know, that's your opportunity to show your enthusiasm. You know, it was mm. bloody impressive. Yeah. But a plan, a plan to change isn't being the actor who plays Vicky Eaton. No, I no. With Gary flailing badly, Rob and John have the resort to every trick in the book. Tell you what, why don't you stand up and do it? Sometimes can't emphasise it. Throw your body into it. Use your hands, use your face. Conservatives, conservatives say drivers should be... It's like getting blood out of a stone. I mean, we're explaining it to him. We're trying to really think of any tools and techniques we can use to get him to liven up his voice, to pick it up. Just really over the top on the words that you've highlighted. Sure. So. The latest figures show almost 9 million are missed every year, but a, plan is cha but a plan to change isn't being considered by the government. Even though we've now probably heard that, what, 500 times, mm. it's not 
sounding boring. You see, that's exactly what we're trying to do for an interview because when, you know, people are interviewing, they're probably seeing 10 candidates in a day and they're asking the same questions and they have heard it all before. The 118 Directory Inquiry Services are under official investigation. It follows claims users get a raw deal. Calls are down 3 million a week since BT's 192 number was scrapped a year ago. Bottom. It's progress, but there's still a lot to do. Because tomorrow, Rob is planning to put Gary through a gruelling mock interview designed to test his every weakness. If he's to have any chance of getting through it, there is still a major hurdle that he must overcome. Taking center stage. OK, you know how you said you don't like being the center of attention in front of large groups of people? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got 30 drunk punters in this pub and you're going to lead them through a pub quiz. OK. OK? <laughs> if you can do this, then you're going to absolutely breeze the interview tomorrow. How do you feel? <laughs> um, I'm shaking. Eat your words, but don't go hungry. Words have always nearly... With five minutes to go before the quiz, Gary is nervous about reading some of the questions. Now remember, to use your voice, exactly what we did in the Radio 1 studio, light and shade, a bit of excitement, this is fun. Now go back to that difficult question. In which ocean are the Galapagos Islands? Galapagos. 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 OK, 15. Time to go, Mike. And let's hear a big round of applause for Gary, who's going to be doing the Jane Norris Race. In which ocean are the Galapagos Islands? Galapagos. Sorry Galapagos. about that. Galapagos. Galapagos. Don't confuse me, please. Give me either of the two events that started before the Olympic, the opening of the cere ceremony of the Athens Olympics. Archery or football? Oh. <laughs> 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 Despite giving away one of the answers, Gary manages to get to the end of the round with no more hiccups. So how do you feel? I um, feel relieved it's over, but I did feel good about doing, doing tonight, the, uh, the quiz. It was, uh, it was all right, it was good. I actually enjoyed it towards the end. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, I suppose bad news first. OK, well, the good news is that you're really good. Okay. The bad news is there's still one more round to go. OK. OK, so we'll just give you a moment, leave you to it. <laughs> Question 31. From what fish do we get cavi caviar? Fighting. Whoever's shouting out the answers, please, can they refrain from doing that, please? Hey. Otherwise, they'll be kicked out by Dave. Thank you. <laughs> With his newfound confidence, even hecklers aren't a problem for Gary, and he survived the pub quiz. We've got the spot prize here that's Number getting shot. given Number to shot. Gary to say thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you enjoy yourself. I've had a great time, thank you. You had a great time, yeah? Thank you very much, Dave. So a big round of applause for Gary! But will it be enough? It's day three, and time for Gary to face his ultimate challenge. Here we go. Time now is 12 o'clock. Got a car coming to pick me up in half an hour for my interview from hell. A bit stressed. That's me. I'm sure I'll deal with it okay. What? Three days ago, Gary's interview performance left him drenched and the interviewers squirming. I had a stage in my life when um, my marriage ended um, where um, I, I kind of, when they knew the marriage was ended, they kind of blanked me. Now, Rob's briefed actors to give him the hardest interview of his life. The kid gloves are off. I want more negativity. Will the training have paid off, or will Gary be left in a heap? So, how are you doing? How are you feeling? A bit nervous, but uh, I'm feeling OK. Good, OK. Well, the interviewers are upstairs. Just be ready for anything. Remember, just stay in control, be confident and be positive, OK? You said that you don't like selling a product that you don't know anything about, but remember, the product is you. It is Gary Snow, and you'll be fine. 
Good. Down there on the left, mate. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. These two interviewers are cold. He really needs to be positive. He needs to think about what he's saying and also how he's coming across. So let's see if he can do that. Come on, Gary. Come on. And you know that you're here to apply for the position of lettings negotiator? That's correct. Okay. What do you think that involves? Probably involves um, obviously dealing with landlords, taking potential clients around to see the property, um, explaining to them about the property. Hopefully, as he gets to interact with them a little bit more, he will warm up. I'll, I'll put money on him warming up. You've gone from the photographic industry to car hire. Why, why come to property? First of all, I, as I said, I, I enjoy dealing with people. I like to think I'm a team player as well, so... On questions which he's practised, he's much better. So can you give me an example of when you've been a good team player? I revert back to my working days. There was many situations where people were off ill or taking holiday. I'd work through the night in order to get the job done. Um, just because I was organising it, that doesn't mean I wouldn't get my hands dirty and get the job done myself. This is good. He's making really good eye contact now. He's really looking at them in the eyes, which just makes him sound so much more convincing. Why did you leave there? We know that there's a sad story here about him splitting up from his wife but if he's learned anything over the last couple of days, it's to hide those tragic details. I've been working there for quite a long time, and I just... Yeah. And I just, I just felt that I'd kind of... Um, I've had a really quite enough of kind of being in that industry. So I kind of approached the, um, the other directors. He's trying to put a more positive spin on it, so he has learned something. So, so, you know, one point to Gary. Going back again over what you, what you would say your key achievements? Helping build the company up from five staff to 40 staff, turning over £6 million a year. This is good. He's listing a big achievement, actually. I mean, working with a business and taking it from five staff to a million pound business, um, it is an achievement. And you can see it in his body posture that he is quite positive about it. Would you give yourself this job? Yeah, I don't see why not. I feel like, you know, a father whose wife has just given birth. Why? I like to think I'm a nice person, um, I enjoy dealing with people, so yeah, why not? Well done guys. How do you feel? Glad it's over. Well, well done. I mean, that is the interview from hell, but that's the whole point of it. You've succeeded at that interview, mm. if you've done that one, then you can do anything. You didn't walk out of the room, you could have done, mm. but you didn't, so you did it. Um, I mean, come on and meet these guys, because they're actually quite nice people never want to go to Thanks. Them, so. Well done, mate. Oh, it's <laughs> very good. Thank you. Walked here. <laughs> to stay through there, so to come back in on it twice. Yeah, very, very brave. Well, didn't want to give up.